Right, it's Mr. Palmer here, and uh, I'm gonna go put together a couple of videos on um, the web technologies component for A-level computer science. So this one's a quick introduction to HTML. HTML. Basically, what is HTML? So what is it used for? A couple of definitions for some things that you need to use um, with HTML. Um, sorry, uh, a couple of definitions for a couple of things around HTML, and then basically what other technologies can be used in conjunction with HTML. So you have an idea of how they will relate together. All right. So first of all, what actually is HTML? HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Hyper basically means over or above. We know what text is. Markup basically the word comes, what the phrase comes from, is a historical term. When uh, a book would be getting ready to go for print, and uh, the author and the editor would make corrections to the text before it went to for final print. So it was information about the text. Okay, and we know what a language is, okay? So HTML basically is a language that identifies content and the relationship between elements. It's possible to create structured documents, okay? The hypertext refers to the fact that the, the text within an HTML document um, can have functions over and above ordinary text, i.e. the text can be links, okay? And markup refers to the fact that the HTML language uh, provides information about the content Okay, so it's information about the information in a page, all right? Um, obviously, to view any HTML content, uh, you can just open it in a text editor, but you're going to get the full benefit of the HTML page, so you need a browser. So the browser basically can retrieve and display the information because it interprets the HTML and then renders the output for you so you can see it. It allows you to, to um, traverse through the different resources so you can navigate by clicking on links uh, on the hypertext and follow your way through the different resources um, um, to see them. Okay, you may see some definitions talk about the use of a URI, that's a uniform resource uh, in identifier, uh, just another way of saying a URL. Uh, so the URI, I haven't put that in here because you may um, access web resources locally, not through a common kind of URI. Okay, but browsers can also obviously um, interpret. Um, web-based uh, languages like HTML, CSS, etc. Now, HTML is not the only uh, markup language. It just wasn't the first markup language. HTML actually actually had its roots in SGML, uh, which was a language that was used at CERN, um, and Tim Berners-Lee used to use that um, as it was part of the document uh, markup languages that they use for preparing documents. Um, and 11 of the 18 original tags in HTML in, SG, in SGML. Um, existed in HTML. HTML had far more tags than HTML. Okay, XML is an extensible markup language. You may use that for your A-level project. Um, it uh, was also used to influence XHTML. So there's XHTML1 and XHTML2, um, which was pretty much nipped in the bud by HTML version 5. Okay, um, MathML, used for math, math equations. Latex, used for printing. SVG, uh, this, I like this language, it's used for creating vector graphics, uh, very similar to HTML, and um, yeah, it's worth having a play with, okay, as a language. So um, let's have a look at a sample HTML page. So I'm using Notepad++ here on the Windows machine, so you can see at the top I've got my doc type, okay, this refers to the DTD, okay, the document type definition. So the browser will read this line first and it knows that this is an HTML5 document. HTML4 a three different versions of the doc type declaration so the browser will pick it up and it will know how to interpret the page okay so every html document uh, starts off um, with the html tag just to see what happens so all tags are in in uh, brackets like that okay i want to save this page so you can see what happens so save as okay i'm just going to change the file type to all files and let's give it a name all right and hit save so now you can see uh, Notepad++ is going to, um, you know, it's interpreting it as an HTML document, and you can see that it's lighting up in pairs. So all most tags work in pairs. They're called container tags, okay, uh, because they have some kind of content in between them. They contain content. Uh, so there are two parts for an HTML document. You've got the head at the top, and you've got the body over here. The head is a, basically a container for metadata. So there's going to be information about the information in the document. For example, here. Well, this is the title okay the body is what you see on the page so this here is my heading and here is a paragraph um, for what is going on you can see clearly the container tag starts off with a p 
and it ends off with a slash p slash indicating the end closing tag okay so i'm gonna i can run that in a browser and you can see what that will look like this is basically it okay so um you can see the title pops up on the tag uh, on the tab okay you've got a heading and you've got a paragraph okay so quite straightforward here uh, tags working in pairs they're called container tags doc type at the top so that they can be interpreted by a browser um, and you've got head is metadata body is mainly what you is what you see on the screen okay there is other content that works with html because html it's not just hypertext you can talk about hypermedia okay hypermedia was a phrase that was in use um i forget the name of the guy who came up with it and tim berners lee liked that idea and hence he called it hypertext all right so you can use different media to create links between the different resources the do different documents okay you can use images sound video you can also embed other interactive content as you know you guys all used to play flash games and other silly things like that okay um, they're not the only th content that works with HTML okay because there are three languages that work together okay so HTML basically as I said identifies the content and the relationship between the different elements on the page so when I say identifies the content you could see in the previous example we're able to identify where is the heading where is the paragraph all right um, and you can then basically understand the relationship between those because you know that this is a heading for this paragraph okay this is a subheading this is a sub subheading and this is the content that belongs to that sub sub area okay they have a language called CSS cascading style sheets all right and this defines how the content should be presented that's going to be in not the next video but the one after and then finally you have JavaScript okay and JavaScript is used to add interactivity because HTML is pretty it's a static language okay um, you can have states using CSS but and you can also do CSS animation but that's quite limited in the in the interactivity that you can add in so JavaScript can actually add interactivity and that can be used the scripting can be used to add functionality that wouldn't exist so it allows kind of web point web 2.0 to really happen all right so you should basically know now what HTML is those and what is it used for and you should be able to explain um, a couple of other technologies that can be used in conjunction with HTML